So last time I did the uh, HDMI mod for this Game Boy Advance and I complained about quite a few usability issues that are allegedly solved by this uh, optional, quote unquote, optional accessory. Um, now one of the biggest issues that I had with this thing uh, is that in the HDMI mode itself, the power usage is just absolutely absurd and it didn't work too well on, um, switch the battery mod on, huh? Uh, and it didn't work too well on regular batteries. I had to use one of these, like, uh, retro modding battery mods, uh, just to get the thing to work and output HDMI while I was using it. Um, another, another issue I had was I was a little bit concerned with how flimsy the micro HDMI port is. I didn't mention it too much in the video, but it did concern me and there were even a couple times where I'd set the console down and the cable shifted enough where the connection was dropped and it had to reestablish. Um, hopefully this solves both of those issues. What this is, this is a dock. Uh, you've got to install this hardware inside your GBA, but then you can just dock it in this thing and it provides you controller input. You still have to use the video out on the GBA itself, though this is for power only, which is a bit of a shame, but whatever. Um, before getting into this too deeply, however, my curiosity is overwhelming, and I must know, so we're going to take it apart. Uh, when I first saw this thing pop up, I assumed it was going to be, you know, more 3D printed garbage. I wasn't too excited about it, but they actually did spring for a plastic injection molded shell. And there are, it appears, four screws holding this thing together. Let's see if I can't pop it apart. Just white plastic, nothing special. Probably ABS by the feel of it. Let's see if it's actually marked like it's supposed to be. Probably won't be. I also don't expect it to be anything special. Why would it be? It doesn't need to be. haven't had this apart yet. It's just very easy to see exactly where the screws are with how thin the uh, little rubber foot grip thing is. No labeling whatsoever on it. If you don't know what it is, you find one of these things in like 20 years, you'll never, never be able to figure it out. And then the junk drawer. Alright, that just comes right out. We've got a Nuvaton uh, microcontroller ML51E B9AE next line 2948B085-ZZ2 last line 037GCHA Hope that helps. Or you just Look at the screenshot because that comes out really well on the video. Uh, nothing special. Looks like we just have a few terminals here for programming the FPGA, uh, FPGA for programming the microcontroller, and then literally just enough to make the microcontroller work, and that's it. Um, I'm guessing we have five volt in and. It's just sending 5 volt to the GBA, that's weird. I don't see a voltage regulator or anything on this. Oh, because the voltage regulator's on this side. Whew, okay. Yeah, not too complex. Uh, you've got two different controller ports, uh, one for original Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, or the 8-bit do wireless dongle thingies, uh, or you've got that Wii connector accessory port for, I think it's 
I think in this case, this thing is designed for the um, like Wii Classic controllers. The idea is that they you use them on a Wii, but they were still technically wireless because you just plugged it into the Wii mote, and that's the that's the same connector there. Um, if you've seen the nunchuck, that's that, but I doubt the nunchuck actually works with this. But we'll try it for shits and giggles. Why not? Let me get this thing back together and we'll try it out. Easy peasy. Just get all those screws back in. Assembly is reverse disassembly. Goes together pretty um, sh shockingly clean. These cheap plastic injection molds usually don't go back together that nicely, but here we are. Anyway, here is tonight's donor. This is that GBA that I literally just barely did a video on. Uh, I'm going to pull out my retro modding battery mod here uh, this specific one is a uh, hand assembled prototype and uh, it's great hence the um, hence the label on the power switch um, they sent this to me to check out and they're like hey we can't sell these because we goofed the uh, label I'm like all right cool anyway I'll do a video on this eventually I promise the data is already there I just haven't actually made the footage um, but that's okay. So we definitely got to pull this thing apart since... I think that's... Okay. Since the uh, last video I did on this, I have done a couple small mods to try and make it a little bit more um, presentable and playable. Uh, like I said, that battery mod is one of them. In the video, I think I specifically used Jugi batteries. Uh, which also work just fine, but I have plenty of these laying around and I only have a couple sets of Jugies, so it makes more sense to throw one of these in there for me, but not necessarily for other people. This should eliminate the need for a battery mod, however. Also, I did add a little bezel to the um, shell there. I sized it I sized it specifically to my cut and then tried slotting it in and it didn't quite fit right so I glued it and then I messed up the glue, but here we are. Anyway, let's get this installed. Pull this apart. And luckily the install looks dead nuts simple. The hardest part looks to be the trim for the USB-C port itself. So pull that up, flip it around, and I suppose I should have opened this first so we can see what all we get. So you got the uh, actual dock portion itself, just the white box with the four connectors on it, one on each side basically. Uh, but in our baggie here, that's where things get a little bit more complicated. So we've got the actual dock portion that goes inside the housing, some adhesive strips and foam. We've got three different types. I've got the thin 300 LSE, uh, the 3M foam type, on double side and then even thicker foam but only on one side. Got two wires and uh, looks like two sets of ribbon cables. I don't think these normally come with two but I think because this is an evaluation um, they just sent extras just in case. Uh, so normally I think you'd only get the one set of ribbons. These look to be the exact same to me. Doesn't look like a product variation or anything. Right, I'm going to set these back. Hopefully we don't need them. Or maybe they all just include two sets of ribbons because realistically what's an extra ribbon on top of the cost of the other parts. Let me pull up the instructions here. And yeah, all of the instructions only show one set of ribbons. So I'm thinking I just got 
um, special? Lucky? I don't know. Either way. Oh, it's supposed to only come with two wires, too. But here we are. So install should actually be pretty easy. We just gotta flip the GBA open. I highly recommend doing this before the screen, but um, we've already got the screen in here, so there's only so much I can do. This one with the little three offshoot goes on this side. We got to get, might as well bring that in just a little bit, huh? Got to get that lined up before sticking the adhesive down. Goes right there. Oop. Not perfectly aligned, but certainly good enough. Nice little solder ball on each of those, and I think we'll be good to go. Do the other side here. It's more complicated looking side with the two big holes in it. Obviously, it goes on the other side. But those, these two holes here are supposed to wrap around some of these components. But what's odd is that there are resistors and caps underneath where this ribbon goes. That seems like an oversight. Yeah, but maybe it'll be fine. And before anyone asks, the other ribbon is the same. I'm not using the wrong one. I really appreciate the uh, precision cut double-sided tape though. That's nasty. Let's fix that. Before I make it worse. Fresh flux and cleaning your tip helps often, so you don't do stupid stuff like that. Alright. Make sure that one's 
nice and flat because it goes under the membrane. And that one does too. Alright, now we have two wires and they attach directly to the board, it seems. But I should probably avoid soldering this until I get this installed in the shell, just to make it a little bit more easier to maneuver. Um, but I suppose I can go ahead and start getting the wires soldered up. They get soldered directly to the battery terminals, because of course they do. There's one. And let's get the other. Totally out of frame, my bad. And then actually solder it. Probably don't recommend doing this right next to the CPU, but I'm doing it straight for uh, just for framing purposes. Get that tinned up. Just to make the video easier to shoot. Solder points are kind of tight. Enough for now, we'll circle back. Does that keep spinning? Ah, there we go. Oh, heck, I could probably screw this down even. As this goes, connectors up. Yeah, just like that. I'm going to screw the GBA down just so things don't get messed up because that screen is kind of installed and I'd have to desolder to deinstall it and it's going to make this install way more difficult than it needs to be but we're going to do it anyway. Again, highly recommend doing this before the kit itself. If you plan to do it that is. Cool, 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 cool. This goes just like that. I think all we need to do... That doesn't seem right. Let me check the instructions. Alright, so the instructions seem to insist that all you need to do is cut the hole for the uh, USB-C port, but I just, I don't see the clearance. I don't think that's going to work with this screen, which is weird because it's like intended for this, but you see how low this screen is sitting. Alright, see what happens I guess. I'll get that lined up marks one. 
there's two, I guess. And uh, let me go drill that out and see what happens. Wish me luck. I am genuinely perplexed at how this is supposed to fit. So, even, it doesn't matter how much I shave out for the USB-C port, the back connector here, let me, let me plug this in. Move my files so when I set it down it doesn't scratch the shell. Alright, so that side is plugged in. And we can uh, pick up the slack, put this thing where it wants us to put it, and there's enough slack to do that. But it's still, like, sitting on top of the screen mod. Like, there's this uh, potentiometer here that I'm assuming is for calibrating the screen. Um, this thing came pre-calibrated, there were no instructions on that. I so I guess we don't need to touch it, but I'm also betting that if I remove it, it will uh, make the screen stop working. So if we put that in and stack it over, you could, like you see how much it's stacked up. And there's before you ask, there's no room underneath the screen if you wanted to put it there, because first off, how would the cable reach and then wrap around under the screen? And second off, this connector makes it too tall to put under the screen anyway. We can try putting under the screen mod. So if I bring that down, I think we can stretch, flex the bottom of the PCB up a little, and then slip this under, but that doesn't actually solve the problem either. I haven't already totally ruined this thing from trying stuff like this. Like, then we can stretch that under there. That's... I don't want to say fine, but sure. It's fine. Oh, but now it's now it's too far over. I gotta lift that up even more. Stretch it over the connector. Because that has to clear that screw post. And then it's sort of kind of flat, I guess. It's better than it was. It's still kind of absurd, though. So might as well keep going. That's positive, that's negative. Might as well solder these up too. I didn't install the foam, but the foam would have never actually touched and reached anyway, so need thicker foam for that. I think in this case this is just what we get. Alright, minus is this one. I'll do plus first. Not recommend soldering in the shell, but unfortunately, I have very little choice here. Do not get these mixed up, your GBA will not be happy. we can do. Aside 
and start trimming the rear shell and hope for the best. So we have thankfully a transparent shell which makes marking this up a little bit easier but I need to trim at the bare minimum around this port. And for that I think I'm actually going to mark it with Sharpie. We need to cut here, probably here, and then probably here. I'm just going to mark it. I'm not going to actually do those cuts yet though. Uh, but I am going to go do some cuts, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I cut out uh, some slots inside the battery cover itself to clear the PCB. Uh, one larger one for where that potentiometer is, uh, one larger one for the USB-C port, and then three smaller ones that I just combined over on the other side of the screw port. For the FFC, uh, the actual regulator and then um, the inductor for the regulator. But at this point, everything is fitting down except for the part that is hitting the USB-C port. So now I just need to make room for that, it seems. Um, thankfully, I am ahead of the curve with a clear shell, so I can see exactly what's not fitting and where and make adjustments, but I'll keep going. All right. I think I finally got it. I don't like how much I had to trim, but it fits now. So let's get it reassembled. Um, I, I kind of glossed over this, and at this point, I, I don't think I have it in me to take it apart again and show you guys, but there was something that I skipped when I was going over the ribbons. Uh, luckily, it did come with a couple extras here. Uh, but once you've got it soldered down, there are these three extra solder pads on the ribbons. This bottom one is select, this top one is L, and this top one is R for uh, button controls for a uh, IPS kit. If that makes it a little bit easier, um, the pictures show that a little bit more clearly than I could. Um, but I think we're getting there. I've lost a screw. It has been hours and hours of filing with cheap needle files and whatever. I think we're finally there. Let me find that screw I'm missing. And don't worry, I found it. Screw that together. At this rate, I have done so much trimming to this shell. It probably would have been easier and quicker to just design my own. But if this works, then you should be good. Or at least I should be good. If you guys want to install something like this, you've got lots of trimming ahead of you. I am displeased with how much trimming and how much improvisation I had to do to get it to work with the kit that it's allegedly designed for. Come on, there we go. I'm fine with a little bit of trimming if I want to do some cowboy stuff, and quite frankly I do cowboy stuff quite frequently. So I mean, I, I get it, it's fine. And uh, the way they sell this thing is apparently it'll work for pretty much any GBA mod, uh, any GBA that you can fit it in, it'll work for because all it does is provide um, wall-based power to the Game Boy Advance 
and then it pins out some of the buttons over USB-C. And mind you, they're just using the connector itself. There isn't an actual like USB protocol or anything like that. I can plug this into a computer and probably all I get is uh, power. But let's find out. Oh no, why would I do that? Oh thank God. That wasn't even the right screw. <laughs> this one. Okay. So, didn't do the best job on the port cutout, but I worked with what I had, and uh, it's alright. Fitment kind of sucks, to be honest. I should still be able to fit this, and I should still be able to use it. Turn it on. And indeed I can. But I should be able to remove that. Put that on there. And da, 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 da. what are the chances it works C to C? Oh my god, it actually nope. too soon. Doesn't want to boot off USB only. Right. USB A, that one works. That's not too bad. It's only uh, 5 volt, 170 milliamps. Um, let me get in, let's unplug that, and we take the adapter, I'm not going to get any capture footage, but if I plug it in, it should still switch over, but it's not doing that, so we're off to a wonderful start, aren't we? Oh, and that just, there's nothing supporting the GBA, just that port. Whew, okay, that is, I guess we're uh, doing it iPod style. Maybe that's what this foam is supposed to be for. Just put that in there and at least it'd be supported by something. I don't know, I'll mess with that later. Let's see what we got. And for anyone that says, oh, your power supply is not powerful enough, this is a 65 watt USB-C PD power supply. And uh, it doesn't support USB-C host, so that doesn't work. This one with the pink cable is a 15 watt USB QC power supply. I guess it sort of works. You're supposed to turn it on before docking it and then slam it right in there. But that's, that's pretty dumb, isn't it? Let me get a uh, test card for this thing. All right, so you'll have to forgive me not doing any capture, but I'm gonna drop my aging cart in there, flip this on, and we're not doing any video out because thing just straight crashes when I try. Oh, it reset. Do I actually have video out? Oh my god, I do actually have video out. Okay, I didn't expect that to work. Uh, it's pulling 5 volts, half an amp. You can barely see that because that's out of frame. Can't see it at all, rather. So, a lot, but, uh, where is my controller? Here it is. I'm just going to use an original Super Nintendo controller. I usually use a Super Famicom controller for this stuff, just because the cable's a little bit shorter, but it's what I have. Input 
I'm not capturing this, so it doesn't make sense that I'm doing it over capture. Tilt that up. Which one's the brightness? There we go. So we have D-pad, everything's working as you expect. A, B, start, select, L and R, and then Y and X are also just L and R. So the controls do work as, uh, as expected. And out of sheer curiosity, I don't expect this thing to do anything, but let's see if it does. Nothing. Yeah. You need a uh, Wii Classic controller for that or something. But I guess it does kind of work. Um, go figure, they screwed up and didn't get USB-C to C compatibility again. It's literally two resistors, that's all they need. And, oh. I was about to get angry about how it switched off when I unplugged it, but there's no batteries in it. Which, by the way, you cannot use this with batteries. You have to remove batteries if you're going to use this. Otherwise, uh, you will reverse charge them. Uh, for something like an alkaline or nickel metal hydride, that is a terribly bad thing. You will blow up your batteries. For something like a lithium ion mod, depending on which specific one, like the retro modding ones, uh, they should be fine, but don't recommend it. Uh, Jugi also should be fine, but still don't recommend it. Uh, the other ones, I don't know enough about how they're wired up to speculate, so probably just avoid, but I don't know. Let's see if this gets any better if I use this foam. I doubt it, but let's find out. Well, it's certainly not as wobbly, but ah, I still really don't like that. Hey, if that's if that's your thing, it does I guess work. Let me plug in a controller and we can play. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna bother with any capture footage. I did that in the last video, which will be linked below. Um, but I don't I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with this foam and this double-sided tape. It did not say, so I'm just going to set it aside. It did say what to do with this, but you were supposed to cut off a small strip and put it right here to support this mod, but that mod doesn't even come close to where the foam would be if I put it there, so I put it here instead. And it seems to work a little bit better, but uh, I don't know, long term? I don't think it's going to hold up. I don't think supporting a whole GBA off of a USB-C port is a good idea, though that does take a considerable amount of weight off the port itself. Uh, at least with something like a switch, you know, you have the thing resting in the housing, but this, it's literally just air-gapped. But... I don't know. I still have totally, totally mixed feelings on this mod. Like, from the get-go, this thing is kinda, kinda janky. Like, it just requires so much frickin' power. Uh, and again, of course, they messed it up so you can't use a USB-C host power supply. Because, why would they let you do that? Um, if we plug it directly into the GBA, is there any difference? That works see if capture works. No, capture doesn't work. It doesn't like being plugged directly in to the GBA. Let's try power cycle. No, oh, power cycle work though. Uh, you'd still have to play like that though, so it's probably best to have something wired up um, for like controls. Like maybe that.
It doesn't want to work on my USB-C host supply. Which is a gosh darned shame. But I swear this thing does work perfectly fine. If I plug it into my phone here, you can see it's drawing seven watts, six watts. So, I don't know. It's certainly not a power supply limit, it's just they didn't support USB-C host properly, so, or at all. And I don't know, this is just a pass-through. Let's see what happens when you plug in USB. Yeah, as I figured, you can power it, but it, there's no, like, it's not sending data over the port or anything like that. And you'd still have to plug in this, which I wonder if it'll even work over USB. Hey, it works over USB, so there's that. Ta-da. Kinda. And then we can just install batteries again, like normal. That's... That's a hard sell, man. Um, so this thing, the idea is that it provides inputs in a dockable form. There isn't really an alternative to something like this right now that I know of. There are, like, one-off mods I've seen people install uh, Arduino is in their Game Boy and then maybe throw a port on it or something or, or do Bluetooth. I've seen inside gadgets. They have their own, like, internal mod that communicates over a uh, 2.4 gigahertz connection. That's pretty neat. That, that, I guess, works if those ever become a thing again, if they start selling those. I know they were wildly unpopular because... There was just very little point in controlling your GBA wirelessly, but with something like this, maybe the argument's a little bit different. And otherwise, all it does is provide button inputs and power. Uh, it's, what, like, just under 40 bucks if you get it from AliExpress, and that's not including the backlight mod. Uh, you're, you're looking at spending over $100 to build something like this, and it's... I think it's not the ideal way to play GBA games on the TV. That's just me. Um, if it appeals to you, like I've been saying, this is this is a very specific niche, and if this niche appeals to you, then, well, good luck. It's basically your only option. Um, but I will throw a link to this stuff down in the description. Uh, video link to when I did the install on this kit itself. This is that uh, DSi one with HDMI out. I had some pretty mixed feelings on that, and while this does help, I don't think it actually solves the problems that I had with the original mod. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I'll, I'll throw a link to the video if you want to check this out. I'll throw a link to where to buy one of these things if you think you need one anyway, which I say pass, but like I said, very specific niche, so you do you, I guess, more power to you. Um, but that's all I've got. I think I will uh, leave this one here and uh, let y'all get back to it. If you want to see gameplay footage from this thing, I did already do the capture on the previous footage video. Uh, the gameplay footage is going to be entirely unchanged, aside from the fact that you're playing with the GBA itself instead of with an external Super Nintendo controller. But I, I still play video games terribly, so that wouldn't have changed a darn thing. Uh, but anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me the demo that uh, one chip had sent them, I guess. Um, until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time.